In this video, we're going to discuss the use of the marks card. Now, I've just opened up the sample superstore data set, and I've created a very simple graph with year of order date as a, the top pill and sum of sales as the rows pill. So year of order dates in the columns, sum of sales is in the rows. And this is about as basic of a graph as we can do in Tableau. Um, and one of the things that we're going to be really focusing on is the use of color and shape and size and other attributes in order to have meaning, we're to use those things with meaning in our visualizations. So in this case, we're just going to explore one of the ways that we do that, which is with the use of the marks card. So when you create a graph in Tableau, it automatically assumes that it has a good guess at what you're trying to do. And since we're doing a time series graph of sales, it automatically chooses to use the marks of a line graph. However, in this case, it's just as not wrong to use a bar graph or maybe even an area graph, although likely not. Likely the bar graph is the most not wrong in this case. Why that is is addressed in another video. But when we first create a graph, Tableau will automatically choose a mark, but we can come in here and change it to anything else that we'd like to try, okay? Now, in some cases these are wrong, and in some cases these, these are not wrong, or different shades of not wrong. But in this case, let's just leave it as a line graph, even though that might not be the optimal graph in this particular case. Now, as soon as I drag profit onto my rows, I end up with two graphs. One column, that's year of order date, discrete, and two graphs that have continuous axes, one for sales, one for profit. Now note that there's been a significant change to what's going on with the marks card. Now, rather than just having a marks card, we have three marks cards, one that says all, and then one that says sum of sales, one that says sum of profit, and note that these are in the same order that the pills are up here in the rows. If we were to switch these around, the marks card switch around too. So now profit is first and sales is second. Now this is pretty straightforward. Anything we do on the all marks card is going to affect all the different graphs. Anything we do on sum of sales will only impact sum of sales. Anything we do on sum of profit will only affect sum of profit. And so something people often do is they do a line graph and they do a bar graph and maybe we'll make that bar graph a different color and then maybe we will make a dual axis and now we have this bar graph with a line graph. Now this is suboptimal right now because we're, we've got a line behind these um, behind the bars, but if I synchronize the axes, that goes away. And now I've got a line graph with a bar chart. And Tableau automatically, because they're on the same axis, they're on the same graph, has now instead of profit and sales being the same color, um, Tableau switched it to profit being blue and sales being orange. But if I had not done any color on my own, if we'd just gone here and we'd made this into a dual axis. Note that it also made that color change for us. All right, and we end up here. Now, even though, now you can see that this is one axis because the pill now has the square line in the center. And we've got two pills that have really kind of become one compound pill. And note that we still have all three of our marks cards. It's not like they all went away. It's not like this was really one graph and they went away. And so we could still change one of the graphs or both of the graphs together, either by using all or one of these. All right. Now, I'll hit undo a couple times, get back to here. Now, again, we've been playing with color. And when I right click on color, 
sorry, when I click on color, I can choose to edit my colors and pick anything from the automatic palette or on, in any of these other palettes or even some, diverge, some diverging gradients. We'll talk about how to choose a good color scheme in another video, but this is where we would apply it. If I wanted one of these to be, maybe if I wanted this line to be a little bit thicker, I could go to some of sales and I could just drag the size. I can make that line a little bit bolder. I could even give another value or a, a place a field on one of these marks to use that as the calculation for determining the size. So for instance, since this is the sales line, now we might not do this in a real graph, but just to show you, I'm gonna take sales again and drop it on size. And now you see that the width of that graph corresponds to the, um, to the amount of sales for that year. And maybe to make that more clear, I might make it a little thinner. You can see that it kind of narrows down a little bit and then it gets wider as we go higher, all right? If you want to show labels, you would use the label mark. You click on the label mark and if you just wanna show the labels down here, you can. If you wanna show the label for all the, for all the uh, graphs, you go to the all and now we have all the labels. And you'll notice that when we have a line, we have something called a path here. When we have the bar, we don't have path. But for instance, if I was to turn this into a pie, we have a new one here called angle. We'll explore all of these different choices in, in, in the marks card as we explore a number of different visualization types. But I wanted you to be, ex to, to be ready to understand when I say things like go to the marks card for some of sales, what I mean, or go to the all marks card. Just be aware that we can have as many marks cards as we have graphs in the visualization. So that's the marks card. We'll explore it a lot more later, but this is just the intro to the marks card.